Good morning, good afternoon, good evening um, to everybody from all around the world who is joining us. Uh, it is morning where I am um, in London. Uh, my name is Claire Malamed. Uh, I'm the CEO of the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data and very happy to welcome you to this closing session of the uh, UN's Big Data Conference, an annual event, which I think has like everything looked a little bit different this year, but not uh, has not lacked any of the uh, excitement and dynamism and innovation of any of its predecessors. Um, so a very warm welcome to all of you who've been attending previous sessions or those of you who have just tuned in for this session. Um, I'm excited to have uh, presenters here with me today from uh, all uh, all around the world, many we were just exchanging time zones as we uh, as we were logging on and uh, people are calling in from many different parts of the world and many different times of day. Um, the session, um, the session this after this, this morning for me is uh, is in three parts. Um, in a moment, we get, we will hear um, will in a moment we'll hear from um, speakers with different perspectives on the UN's global platform. Uh, which, as all of you know, is a data infrastructure which has been created by the UN to serve and support official stat statistics to adopt and share uh, big data methods uh, and tools. Um, then we're going to go into a second part, um, again, focusing in on official statistics and the uptake of new methods, but much more from the perspective of collaboration and training and how to overcome the barrier which we sometimes see, which is caused uh, by um, the need for increased capacity and training on all sides. And then finally, we will hear from some of the organizers of the conference, uh, some closing remarks um, and close our session. So without further ado, let us begin um, the, uh, let us begin with the first session. And I'm very happy to welcome first Tom Smith, who uh, is the managing director at the Data Science Campus at the Office of National Statistics in the UK. Uh, he's been there since uh, 2017 and uh, has set up the, the data science campus, which I've had the privilege to visit. Uh, it's an incredibly exciting place full of uh, innovation and, uh, and the occasional uh, stuffed unicorn, I seem to remember. Um, but uh, Tom, more importantly, uh, is also uh, was one of the, the sort of leading lights in the creation of the global platform and is currently the chair of the advisory board and also a, men a member in the UK government of the Ministerial Advisory Group to the Cabinet Office on Open Data. So looks at this both from a national and an international perspective. Tom, I wanted the Office of National Statistics obviously was crucial uh, in the development of the UN Global Platform. You personally and other colleagues I know in the office were very closely involved in the development of the platform and the commitment remains with you chairing the advisory board. I wonder if you can, to set the scene, just tell us a bit about what the vision was as you conceived and built the platform and specifically, what was the problem you were trying to solve? What is the fundamental purpose of the platform? Thanks, Tom, over to you. Thank you, Claire. And good morning, colleagues from the UK um, and around the world. And just to start with, I think the, um, the importance of the community and the global community around using big data for official statistics is really shown by this conference. So the six in a series of the, the big data and official statistics international conferences, that's testament and the, the number and the quality of speakers and presentations and, and work that is going on globally is testament to the importance of this community. And that's really where we started from in the, the UN global platform and the vision that, that Claire asked about. Um, stat statistics and data have never been more important. Um, and certainly right now we're seeing that with the, the public interest, the media interest, government and company interest in coronavirus and official statistics, accurate, robust, reliable data on the spread of coronavirus. And that really kind of underlines the importance of data and the range also of data sets and data sources that people are interested in. And so this was the starting point for the global platform work that the data revolution brings us to a position where government probably knows less or has less access to data inside government than is held outside government. So if you think of all of the data sources that are generated by us as users and citizens 
that are now held by companies. When you think of all of the data streams that companies and organizations are thinking about or developing, um, when you look at all of the interest in, in using data from different form places, as well as official statistics. So thinking uh, clearly companies and industry, clearly SDGs and global development, clearly academics and universities, data scientists and so on. There is just this huge interest in using data and using data well. And big data has to be part of the toolkit for official statistics. And so the problem we were trying to solve with the UN Global Platform was to ensure that official statisticians that national statistics organizations and agencies around the world had access to the tools and to the data sets in order to really drive value in terms of better, stronger, more repeatable and so on official statistics. So really to basically make use of the sorts of material and, and tools that other parts of the world are using. So that was the vision. And I really want to kind of highlight the work from the global working group that, 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 you know, that is running this conference um, in setting up the UN Global Platform and driving that. Um, first in the ONS with the Director General for Data Capability was Heather, Heather Savory, but then our co-chair Niels Plug in the Global Working Group and Ronald Janssen, many of you will know in the Secretariat, and colleagues really drove this as an idea. The UN, so the Global Platform is a pilot to test that proposition that big data can drive value, can improve our understanding of the world through official statistics. So putting in place the tools, so that's the technical pieces, then bringing in the data sources. So I'm thinking here of things like satellite imagery, global shipping GPS, the AIS data sets, plane date, data on airplane movements, and many more. Thinking about those as fundamental sources that official statisticians and other groups should really be able to take advantage of very quickly. So that was the, the vision and the problem we were trying to solve. Um, the pilot ran out of ONS in terms of the technical work, but it was really a global effort. And I think the, these conferences and the, the, the work by the global platform team in terms of the technical group, the supporting group and so on, um, really was a global effort, which ONS sort of supported in with resources and so on. And I think I saw the campus as an early adopter, a user of the sorts of data sets and the tools and so on that the global platform was driving and developing. What I think the real challenge is now is to go from that early adoption stage, proof of concept, and mainstream this. This is the challenge facing the, the, the platform and the teams and, the, and as a community, because I believe there's huge value here. The discussions and the advisory board and with colleagues globally really show this, that there is value in the, UN, in the national statistics organizations across the world and the community in being able to share their good practice and what they have learned in terms of using data sources to improve official statistics. And that community part kind of comes back to the beginning because I think the, the platform is often seen as a technical piece. It's a technical piece partly, but most importantly, it's a community to, and a place and a platform to share information, share resources, share working practices and so on. And so that's why I'm really pleased that Claire and the GPSDD team are involved in helping us scale from the early adoption stage through to the mainstream. And I'll give one example, if I may, just before kind of handing back to Claire. Um, and this is around using shipping GPS data. So the, what's called the automatic identification system, the AIS system. Um, there are many of us around the world who've been using this, thinking about this in pockets of pra good practice. What the UN Global Platform has enabled us to do is given us a place to collaborate and bring a lot of that work together. So under the Global Working Group, there is the AIS task team led by Ronald's colleagues. Um, and there are many organizations and agencies feeding into that. So it's really great to see global data sources being brought in from companies that collate the, the shipping data, being used by, in my instance, the campus, we use this for faster economic indicators to give us an early heads up on what's happening in the UK economy. Our colleagues in DFID, Department for International Development in the UK, are using this to look at economic impacts around the world in terms of from COVID, um, for example, on ODA countries for overseas that are receiving overseas development agent aid. 
but there are many more. That's the UK. Really globally, there are people looking at this and using this data set source, which the platform gives us a place to collaborate. And that's why I'm really excited, why I think it is part of the toolkit going forward, and why I think there's a really great place to sort of build on. But there are challenges. We need funding. We need support and sustainable support. We need input. Many of those things are there. But this is the challenge for me getting the next stage. And I think I'm probably out of time with lots more to talk about, but I'm going to hand back to Claire. Thank you very much and look forward to the discussion. Thank you, Tom. And uh, thank you for that. A really excellent scene setter, I think, setting out exactly why this is so important and so uh, exciting. Let me um, turn now for uh, a different perspective to uh, Yusuf Marangwa, who is, as I'm sure known to many of you, as the uh, Director General of the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, where he's been since 2009, um, professional statistician with more than uh, 15 years of experience. Um, and going forward, the um, NISR is particularly focused on developing administrative data systems and, of course, is leading on the use of technology in statistics production um, and establishing the enabling environment technically, practically in terms of capacity and training for big data and the data revolution in Rwanda. So Yusuf, obviously you're working in a context in which the government of Rwanda has absolutely embraced uh, the data revolution policy, has um, the 2017 official publication on the da da national data revolution and big data outlined very clearly the core vision and objectives of the policy around harnessing the insights from data analytics. Um, and the, your prime minister opened the data science campus and training center um, during the fifth international conference on big data for official statistics, which you hosted at NISR. Um, of course, you're also very much involved as a core part of the uh, global platform enterprise hosting the regional hub on big data for Africa, where you're working jointly with the UN Economic Commission for Africa to organize activities across the region. So clearly with this very strong support from your government to modernize, um, strong support regionally, and the position that you have now as a leader across the region, just tell us a little bit about your priorities uh, for the coming years and how you feel the regional hub can help to drive the modernization that we've seen in Rwanda across the whole, uh, across the whole of the region. Over to you, Yusuf. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Claire. Uh, true, the demand for statistics uh, is very high and the need to use latest technologies and tools is also increasing and uh, very important. Uh, in Rwanda, in the next uh, two to three years, we want to see a major shift uh, in the way we, we do official statistics. We want to integrate uh, big data as much as possible. Uh, we're already using big data in so many aspects. For example, in uh, measuring uh, the information and communication technology sectors, uh, in measuring transport, in measuring uh, the finance sector, uh, and the list is getting longer. Uh, going forward, we want to integrate other major sectors, for example, agriculture, which is very important in our region and other countries in our context. Uh, areas like uh, the environment, areas like urbanization, areas like uh, dealing with the SDGs, so uh, it's very clear going forward, uh, big data will be very important in supporting uh, official statistics and uh, global development efforts. Uh, our priorities going forward uh, are very specific, especially in line with our interests and uh, the interests of the hub. Uh, after having a good infrastructure that can allow us to do uh, uh, what we want to do in terms of physical infrastructure, uh, we are now installing uh, key connectivity infrastructure. We want to be able to connect to the global platform very effectively and also connect uh, other countries in the region uh, to, to our hub in a very effective manner. And uh, in the next two to three months, uh, we want to, to staff uh, our center, our data science campus, but also the hub. 
uh, some of the staffing we are going to do for our data science campus should be able to support the hub uh, as much as, as we can go. And uh, we already have consensus on that. We already have resources on that. Uh, it's just a matter of time. We've been uh, slowed down by COVID-19, uh, but we hope now as uh, COVID-19 is uh, loosening up a little bit, we should be able to fast track that. Uh, then we should embark on training of the key staff, especially for the hub. Uh, train them in key analytical skills, both general skills, but also project specific skills, because it's, it's very important to have project specific skills in addition to general analytical skills. Uh, train them in uh, data access and connectivity issues, train them in uh, data security and privacy issues, and train them in so many other things. Then we should be able to open up such kinds of trainings to other countries in the region, uh, working with our partners at the UN Economic Commission for Africa, uh, the African Center of Statistics, uh, working with the UN Statistics Department, working with the Global Platform, working with all other partners. We should be able to open up this kind of capacity building to, to, to all countries in the region and even beyond. Whoever is interested should be able to, to join such kind of trainings. Uh, we are also willing uh, as a country to open up and volunteer as a, as a proof of concept uh, place where specific case studies of some of these projects that we want to do can happen. And then uh, if they succeed, we open up to the region. Uh, in the short run, what we see the hub will do, uh, the hub will be a place to support other countries and to train other countries on use of big data, especially for official statistics. But what we should aim for in the medium to long term is to bridge the gap, the capability gap between the hub and other countries. Everything that we, we are able to do at the hub, all other countries should be able to do. We, uh, countries should not be reliant of the hubs forever. We want to see this gap narrowing down, both in the region, but even globally. And uh, after that, we should only have key services at the hub that facilitate uh, uh, other countries or work on pioneering uh, pilot projects that should be integrated in official statistics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yusuf. And I think a really important reminder, the sense you've um, picked up where Tom left off that Although we think of the of the platform as a, a kind of infrastructure and as a very technical um, enterprise, of course, Yusuf, as you very much pointed out, really, this is all about training and capacity and relationships and leadership and those kind of other community building activities, which actually will be the determinant of success or failure in this enterprise. So um, Thank you very much indeed. And we'll pick up some, I'm sure we'll pick up some of these thoughts um, in the questions to follow. Um, let me turn now to uh, Mr. Mohammed Hassan, who is the uh, Executive Director of, data in, of the Data and Statistics Sector at the Federal Competitiveness and Statistics Authority of the UAE, where he's been since 2015 um, and previously worked as at Microsoft uh, at the Gulf focusing on the business development and digitizing government services. So we've seen this both from the uh, private and the public sectors. Um, Mohammed, obviously we know that the UAE also is a, is a leader um, regionally and globally and digital UAE is an initiative of the federal and the local governments to make the UAE into a, a smart country. Um, and among others, it also includes a national program for artificial intelligence. So we're taking now the, the, uh, the uses of, uh, of big data beyond the realm of, of analytics and information into um, artificial intelligence. Um, UAE is obviously the regional and, and international cooperation in digital transformation and the smart data framework has been key. Um, and in relation to the official statistics, um, the EU signed in March 2020 the Memorandum of Understanding with the UN for collaboration again on the regional hub of the UN Global Platform in Dubai. Um, so how, tell me a little bit about the ways in which government policy is helping the FCSA to modernise and how just some of your thinking and priorities around the 
how your office is planning to use big data, data science and artificial intelligence, your priorities. Um, and again, of course, coming back to your planned, uh, the way that the global platform integrates in both your national and your regional thinking. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Claire. Thank you very much. First of all, let me first thanks the UN Global uh, Working Group and Statistic uh, Korea for setting up this conference. Being part of the UN uh, Regional Hub, it helped us really as NSO to take a different approach to modernize the country data strategy through policy and societies and engaging with the private sector. Of course, I have to say that since I came from private sectors to help us actually modernize the data with the NSO. Learning from the current pandemics, the government took uh, a few changes, uh, steps uh, a few months back by launching, uh, as you mentioned, the new digital government strategies. The goal is to work on comprehensive and complete digital transformation to make sure that the data has actually become part of the economy booster initiatives and actually ensure the business continuities. To support our effort as NSO and the data science uh, with, the, so with, the, uh, with, the, with the use of AI, UAE appointed an AI minister who looked at uh, putting the UAE to be a major hub for developing uh, AI technologies and techniques and legislation, which is an important part right now, especially how to govern the data and to make sure that there is a privacy on the data sharing part. One of the major opportunities that the AI minister is looking at is actually data sharing and governance, as I mentioned. And UAE aims to become a faster adopter of uh, the emerging AI technologies across government, as well as experimenting the use of data with new technologies and actually work in, in a bit of sophisticated way that the regional hub help us on the platform, which is available in the regional hub to make sure that the ecosystem actually solves some of the complex problems in government, as, as Tom mentioned a few of them, which is the shipment logs and other. These are many initiatives being conducted uh, uh, in and, 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 and the UAE, and there are few initiatives came out as part of us being a member of the regional hub is something called Think Data and Think AI. It's a consortium of students, government, private sectors, and data scientists, plus the national statistic offices, all of them in one round table to support building the government new data strategies. Other initiatives um, we started as part of the regional hub is the collaboration with other entities in the UAE. So we launched the AI lab, which is the first of its kind lab in, in the city of Dubai, which works on harnessing the power of machines, uh, learning to integrate the AI into government servicing, uh, and, and change the experience to improve the citizen uh, overall quality of life uh, and boost happiness. Tom mentioned very important data is not only for improving government services or for, for statistics uh, to be provided for decision makers, but actually is to change the societies and, 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 and you know boost the happiness of the societies to give them a better, better experience and to see the use of these data. The last initiatives was the 1 million Arab code, coders programs. Uh, uh, maybe Yusuf mentioned an important part, which is uh, the regional hub is doing, is actually the trainings uh, and changing the culture of how to learn the, 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 the new technologies that support data improvements. Uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, uh, the prime minister, as part of his global initiatives of the foundation, dedicated to spreading the education and knowledge across the Arab world. So the aim was to empower one million Arab Arabs with essential skills required uh, for employment in the future using coding. The program offered many opportunities for students to be involved in many development tasks, but one of, one of the most important things in this program is actually data analysis and how to use the tools to read these data. The last point uh, that I want to mention is that uh, we as NSO, we, are, we, we, uh, um, we try to do further development using the regional uh, hub, and we started a department in, in, the, in the NSO called the Future of Data. This department, its core important is to look at data innovation and working toward changing the culture of using the new data sources and new technologies uh, that the regional hub, uh, uh, the regional hub platforms uh, provide and supports and, 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 and not only us, is actually provide that and open for all the regions. The focus, uh, the focus on enabling the culture of data sharing using public and private, uh, public private partnership recent, recently uh, um, helped us on in many initiatives. The last one was also uh, data hackathon. It's where we engage the students to work on the new data 
the, and the new data sources. An important point mentioned by Tom here is also, uh, there are new data, data set that is being generated by the societies. We have more than 2.5 quintillion bytes of data that is being produced daily, which is, if I put it in numbers, is one, uh, 2.4 and 18 zeros. See, the amount of data that society produced becoming more than the statistical data. And the regional hub actually will help us to maximize the use of, 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 uh, of these data to come up uh, to, to try and solve society's problems and government's problems. And at the same time, to ensure the, continui the continuity of the business uh, and the economy of the countries. Back to you, Claire. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you mentioned culture there, because I think it's absolutely critical that we think about this exactly in those sort of long term, uh, you know, as a sort of long term project around um, really changing the way that we think about data and our assumptions and particularly, of course, the way that the changes that that leads in terms of how people work together across public and private sectors within different parts of government and so on. Um, so I think we should definitely uh, come back to that point. I'd be interested to see how um, how others are also thinking about these, the kind of cultural um, and institutional changes um, that this kind of uh, enterprise can bring. But before that, let me uh, turn um, to, to Mr. Um, Xi'an Zude, who is the Deputy Commissioner of the National Bureau of Statistics of China, where he's been since um, December 2016. Um, the National Bureau of Statistics of China and UNDESA are also a, a close, uh, I believe, to signing an agreement re regarding collaboration on the regional hub in, um, in Huangzhou in China. And the facility is already operational and the big data center here will host, of course, both national and international experts to work on the projects. And again, as we've heard from others, offer training activities as a really important part of the collaboration um, the Huangzhou Big Data Center will also though work very closely with, um, with Hezang province, as well as with Alibaba, which has its, uh, which has its headquarters in Huangzhou. So I'm very interested to hear from you, uh, Mr. Xian, how this collaboration between the NBS China at the national level, between the province and then between Alibaba, how that is arranged with respect to operating and how you see the benefits of that sort of tripartite collaboration in terms of the future activities, the project and training activities, and some of the plans you're developing as you come close to signing that MOU. Over to you, please. Good afternoon, and thank you, uh, Claire. Uh, uh, we are looking. Uh, we are looking forward to the signing of the MOU with DESA. Uh, uh, even though we have not signed the MOU, we have already started to use it. As uh, you have uh, said, that the uh, China Regional Hub is already operational, even though we haven't signed the MOU. Our basic facilities have been completed. The first batch of workers has been hired. And we have already finished the uh, infrastructure construction, and uh, the first batch of staff was already there. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, as we all know, that the China Regional Hub is uh, co uh, jointly constructed by the NBS, yeah. UNDESA, and also the Zhejiang Provincial Government. Yeah, we share the uh, common view that big data is uh, quite important. Uh, so the Zhejiang Provincial uh, Government will provide some funding to the regional uh, hub. Uh, yeah, and also the Zhejiang province, uh, province provided us with a very good location of the original center, uh, which is quite close to the Alibaba headquarters, uh, about five kilometers. Uh, 在它的十公里以外, 就是一个五千年的城堡, 
五千年以前的城堡。So, uh, within uh around ten kilometers, we can see a old castle uh with uh five thousand years of history. 嗯，在它的旁边呢，就是著名的西湖和一个湿地。So beside the uh, regional center, we can see uh, the West Lake in Hangzhou, and uh, so the this center really enjoy good views. Uh, Alibaba 呢是作为一个可信的合作伙伴，他们将在这个基础架构，呃，基础架构方面提供技术的支持。So uh, the Alibaba is uh, really a, a cred credible partnership for us. So they will provide some technical assistance in the infrastructure. 同时呢，我们也正在商谈如何利用阿里巴巴的一些交易数据来改进呃我们的呃价格统计工作。So we are also discussing the uh possibility of using some transaction data of Alibaba to improve our uh statistics. 呃，杭州中心呢，作为联合国全球平台的一个区域中心，我们将按照。全球平台的工作，呃，规呃规则，在推进 SDG 监测和大数据创新和培训方面开展国际合作。So、uh, as an original、uh, hub of the UNGP, the China Regional Center、uh, will follow the guidelines of the UNGP and we will promote the work in SDG、uh, monitoring,、uh, big data innovation, and also trainings. 呃，首先呢，这是一个创新的平台。我们已经在这个卫星和遥感，在农作物谷产方面取得了呃新的进展。So uh, this platform uh, or this center should first be an innovative platform. So uh, I can tell you that we have already made progress in using the uh satellite data uh to do some crop plantation statistics. 在价格和快速经济调查应用。电子商务数据方面，我们也正在呃正在呃取得进展。So we are also making progress in using the、uh, e-commerce data to improve our price statistics and also the rapid economic uh, uh, monitoring. 呃，第二呢，我们也希望这个中心呢是一个国际合作的平台。我们希望呃各国的专家，特别是我们几个区域中心的，能够互相呃交流。So, uh, so we also expecting this regional center as a, a collaborative platform, which means that uh, uh, all international experts are welcomed to communicate, and all the uh, expertise from the UNGP and also the regional hubs can share their views. We specially So uh, we uh, especially uh, have one floor for international experts to use and to communicate. Uh, 第三呢，就是弄呃，就建成一个培训的平台，就像刚才呃，克拉梅登女士说的，这是一个培训的平台。So, uh, thirdly, we would like to,、uh, to have、uh, to make this center as the training platform, as uh, what have mentioned by our、uh, colleagues from Rwanda and the UAE. 呃，我们将也将利用这个中国和联合国信托基金项目，呃，开展国际培训，特别是为发展中国家提供呃培训项目。So we will make full use of the China UN Trust Fund to provide trainings, uh, to uh, to the expertise from the uh developing economies. 呃，我最后要强调的是呢，就是在当前这种情况下，特别是我们面对这个新冠疫情。加强国际合作是非常重要的。So, uh, one point to underline is that we need to strengthen the international cooperation, especially facing this uh, uh complicated international environment. 我们也希望这个杭州中心在这方面这个发挥更大的作用。谢谢。So we hope the China Regional Center can play a bigger role in this aspect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, really interesting, and I very much appreciate the reference to history also, and the reminder that while this uh, new world that we're in feels extremely modern and uh, and very shiny and new, some of these uh, issues that we're grappling with have uh, been the same for uh, centuries, if not millennia. Um, so um, very much appreciated the reminder that uh, issues around data and information and the running of governments are as old as governments themselves. Um, 
So we have time, I think, um, for one question um, to, to you all. I uh, was so interested in what you were saying that I was a little too lenient in the manner, matter of time. Um, but I, um, I wonder if we've, we've talked a lot about uh, some of the practicalities around training and technology and so on. I wonder, and just thinking about the sole declaration um, and you know the outcome document for this event in which we are now at the closing stages, um, I'm interested to know what you see, if, if you imagine to a future where in five, in 10 years time, uh, we are sitting here and some of these techniques of big data have widely used and statisticians everywhere are fully using all of the uh, the tools and techniques and data that, uh, that at this moment we can only dream of. What do you think is the biggest challenge um, that stands between us and that world? We've heard a lot of things mentioned um, during the course of this discussion, cultural change, institutional change, technical change, training and capacity, connectivity and some of the technical infrastructures, um, at least those five. And I'm just wondering, what for you is the single biggest challenge that stands between us and this scale, this, this sort of the use of big data at scale um, to provide real value for decision making for governments? Um, so let me go back and ask all of you that question in the order in which you first spoke. Um, so Tom, let me invite you first to reflect on that. Thank you, Claire. Great question. My view is that we need to get beyond thinking about and talking about this as big data. So data is data and it's, it's material for statistics and analysis and driving those decisions that, that governments and companies are increasingly dependent on. Um, and I think the, the big shift is to move, is to push that, that collaboration aspect. And I, 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 I kind of, I see the global statistics community and national stats agencies in particular as one part of that community as one of the most collaborative parts globally of the, of the, the, the global government systems. Um, and we need to do that because definitions and things like that are really important. So to have a measures of, uh, 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 of the economy, of trade and so on, and of people and censuses and populations and so on, we need to understand the definitions, the way that we're each working. So that kind of drives a real, a real importance uh, that underlies this, a real importance of the collaborative work. So the sharing aspect here for me is the key hurdle we need to jump over, get a climb over, scrabble over, in order to drive this use of data and big data. And so from the sole, to, to link back to the Seoul Declaration, um, we talk about sharing in there as one of the, the key action points coming, or key points coming out. I think that's so important because we need to get to stage, and I used the phrase from early adopter to mainstream in my, my opening comments. I think that's the critical bit. We need to be at a point where we are confident that data sources have the quality and that our analysis and our methods used to assess those data sources provide quality and robust statistics. So we need to get over the really high hurdle that we set ourselves of uh, what is an official statistic. What is, and in the UK, what is a national statistic? These are serious criteria. It should not be easy to get over those, those hurdles, and, it, and it, it, it isn't. So we need to get to the point where we can really drive collaboration, sharing around methods and the community on data sources so that we are using these sorts of sources day in, day out for official statistics and analysis to drive decisions. So that's 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 my view. If I've got longer, I'll expand, but I'll hand back to you, Claire. Afraid not. Thank you so much, Tom. And I think that's a really important summary of some of the barriers that exist inside the statistics community and the necessity of collaboration within the community and as you say breaking down some of the barriers that exist between types of data big data official data and so on but with that relentless focus on quality as you suggest i hope that some of the others will pick up some of the barriers that exist outside 
of the data community, of the statistics community as well. And we can think a little bit about political, institutional and social issues. Um, Yusuf, let me invite you now to just reflect very briefly, please, on um, what you would see as the single biggest challenge in moving towards um, this, this sort of world in which big data is a much more common part of policy making. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Claire. This is a very important question. And in fact, uh, depending on how we answer it and fix the issues will, de will determine our success or failure going forward. Six years ago in China, we were all on the table giving ideas. Uh, from then to last year in Kigali, we were trying to set up institutional arrangements on how to, to move forward. Uh, now, and vis-a-vis -vis I think we have lost the connection to Yusuf. Um, so perhaps um, we if start you acting, act. we should. Yusuf, we are losing you. Perhaps if the Secretariat team could mute Yusuf and just send him a message that we will um, try to improve the connection. Um, but so as to not lose any time, let me um, move swiftly now to Mohammed. I want to pick up. Um, with you, some of the very interesting points that you raised about culture in particular. And if you could just expand on that a little bit and talk us through what you see as some of the cultural barriers, both inside and outside the statistics community for making full use of the opportunities that are now available to us to technology. And some of your thoughts, again, very briefly, please, about um, how those could be overcome globally, as well as taking forward what you're doing within the UAE. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, let me take it from my experience with the private sectors. And, I, and, and maybe that is to add to what Tom says. The biggest issue is every private sector, let's put some facts. Governments, they don't own the data. They don't have all the data, especially with the current revolution of the data changes. The, 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 the sector who has the data is actually the private sectors. If we want to really in, in enrich our statistical data. So unless until we don't come up with a proper governance, a proper policies that ensure there is no competitive gonna happen between data that came up from a private sector A and a private sector B, that is not, is not going to happen. The main reason is that the private sector is always afraid that someone is going to take the business. So where is the differences between uh, Amazon and Alibaba? Why both can't share the data? For a, for a normal reason is because if there is a competitiveness in the markets. So unless until we as a as a as an NSO around the world come up with a proper governance that ensure any data that is being shared between private sector and the government are secured and are not shared in a certain way that is not compromising the sales of the private sectors, the people, the privacies. I don't think we're going to go further steps on that. That's in a nutshell my feedback. If we want to change the cultures. That's the culture where we need to fix is that the owner of the data is not anymore as government is actually private sectors. Thank you very much, Claire. Thank you so much. Really, really interesting uh, point. Let me um, try to go back now to Yusuf. Um, shall I do that? Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. Please, sure, Yusuf. Sure. Uh, sorry about the drop and come back to you. Yeah, uh, as I conclude, uh, I was saying that now it's a call to action, and uh, this time action should be uh, to get the attention of especially politicians and other key stakeholders. We should start producing statistics that are relevant. They should be relevant for development. Uh, they should be relevant for national development plans. They should be relevant for regional plans. They should be relevant for the SDGs. This is the time if we achieve that in the next one to three, five years, uh, we should be able to pick the interest uh, of all stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A really important point. I can never, we can, I think, never talk too much about politics in these, uh, in these technical discussions and a reminder that politics is absolutely central to this. I think very well taken. Um, and finally, Xian, let me uh, turn back to you, please. What is the one thing uh, that you would like us to prioritize uh, in the in the coming years. 
，这是个非常好的问题，也值得我们呃呃呃来讨论和思考。So, uh, you have uh, raised a very excellent uh, question. 呃，未来的十年确实是充满了挑战，但我认为面临最大的挑战是 SDG 的目标，呃，这些如何有更好的数据来支撑。So uh, we are really facing many challenges in the coming 10 or uh, even more years. But for me, I think the biggest challenge is how to produce more data to support the SDG monitoring. Uh, so uh, from my perspective, uh, the traditional way of collecting data cannot satisfy this need. We need to new data. 新的数据的创新来支撑我们呃收集到更多的数据。So we need to be innovative and we should collect more uh new data. So 这就需要我们进行数据的整合，数据的质量的标准，包括人员的素质，都是面临的挑战。So uh in this aspect we need to do more work in the data integration, uh uh or also the data quality uh guarantee and also to uh, do capacity building. 同时还要保护这个这个私营部门和个人信息的隐私。And at the same time, we need to uh, guarantee the confidentiality of data and to protect the private sector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed to all of you. I think that was an incredibly um, stimulating conversation, and I think. Um, if I might try to uh, sum up, I think, you know, what we're left with is, um, is of course, an incredible sense of, of sort of excitement and momentum around the global platform. And I think this global panel has really demonstrated the extent to which the, uh, the value of the platform is now being kind of being felt around the world and the many ways in which it's being used. And of course, we're poised, as Tom said, for uh, Moving from this pilot phase to um, to scaling the scaling up the uses and the users of the platform worldwide. So it's an exciting moment, and of course, I thank you all um, hugely for your leadership and and your energy and commitment in taking us this far. And I'm very much, you know, from the global partnerships point of view, looking forward to working with you all on the next stage. I think we're left again with some very clear. Um, guidelines for how we how we move forward and what the priorities are. Of course, the point about collaboration within the statistics community is absolutely central. Um, and then the point about collaboration beyond the statistics community. And I think, as Mohammed said, the critical role of governance in enabling that collaboration and building trust and confidence among all of the uh, among all of the partners, pr public and private. And then, of course, as Yusuf mentioned, absolutely critically, the importance of politics and demonstrating the value always of what is done to politicians for, to enable the, uh, the right regulatory frameworks, the resources, and, and ultimately the use of all of this data which is being produced, which has its value in the use by politicians to make decisions. And then finally, a very critical reminder uh, by by Sian that we absolutely have to always return to the sustainable development goals as the framework within which we are operating and the uh, the guiding light in a sense which is driving all of these activities towards achieving those goals for ourselves for our children for the planet. So I thank you all enormously uh, for your contributions on this panel. I think as well as contributing hugely and interestingly to the discussion, you very much paved the way for our next panel, um, who I will uh, now turn to, because I think all of you have raised the importance of training and capacity building, um, which we're going to now turn to. But first, let's have, please, uh, among the audience, a virtual at least, I'm sorry, this is very unsatisfying as a reward for all of your hard work, but a at least a virtual um, round of applause to uh, to the panel um, and we uh, bid you farewell. So at least from me, applause, thank you very much. Um, okay, I'm now going to turn uh, our attention to following up on some of those issues of, uh, 
of capacity building um, and training that we uh, heard so much about um, in our first in our first panel. I think we all understand the absolutely critical um, that the sort of the critical importance of collaboration training. We've heard about it both nationally and regionally and globally in enabling individuals and institutions to take up all of the opportunities um, and possibilities that we know are there. Um, so to guide us through this discussion, uh, which will take a similar format as we know to the first discussion, um, let me first invite uh, Mr. Bert Kroeser from the Statistics Netherlands. Bert is a Deputy Director General and the Chief Information Officer at Statistics Netherlands, where he's been since 2013 and is responsible for IT, for data strategy, and for building co um, cooperation across government, which we uh, know is no easy task. Um, now, you've been the Acting Director General of Statistics Netherlands for the last five months, uh, precisely while your country, along with all of the countries around the world, was mitigating the spread and battling the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, this has led to a huge interest in and sort of public concern with data worldwide and I think really shown a, shone a spotlight on the importance of data for uh, decision making and for trust. Um, so just tell us a little bit, I know that Statistics Netherlands has had a centre for big data since 2016 and how the, uh, the big data centre helped Statistics Netherlands and the government more broadly in this transition um, to the use of new methods and the response to the pandemic and the urgency that that posed to the production of data uh, for decision making and for public communication. But over to you. Hello, Bert. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Claire. I think I'm unmuted now. Uh, yes. Um, the, the Corona COVID period has uh, given rise to a lot of innovations. Um, in the Netherlands, our government has asked more and more uh, for data that underpin their decisions. Uh, in uncertain times, there's more and more need for data that give them ground under their feet. So we had a lot of innovations uh, without big data, uh, like with communication with users, uh, methodology for missing data, uh, improving timeliness and frequency of existing statistics. Uh, there was a lot of needs to uh, have more timely information to steer on how it is now and not in the past. New statistics based on economic support programs and the introduction of video assisted interviewing because we could not uh, go along doors of people. But also big data plays an important role. Um, for example, we uh, published statistics about hoarding in shops, people running to shops to buy uh, toilet paper, uh, all kind of um, elementaries uh, to, to, to hoarding. And we could use Canada to have a very actual picture of that. Um, mobility uh, data uh, based on public transport data. Uh, so people have this public transport card in the Netherlands. Uh, bank transaction data to monitor the shift to online payments. Uh, people go away from cash uh, because they have to touch that, they go to online. But also social tensions by social media, how people feel uh, in these uh, specific periods. So we use big data. And what we do is uh, we uh, we have the Center of Big Data Statistics, as you mentioned. Um, there are a lot of data scientists there. Uh, there's data there uh, and they make experimental statistics. Uh, and then we publish it on our innovation website. They're all there. Uh, it's English. Um, and obviously there, the question came up in the first panel too, when is it going to be official statistics? What it is with quality? There's a cultural aspect there, um, but we published it and it is used. So uh, big data plays a role and uh, it plays a role because you can describe phenomena that you cannot describe otherwise. Um, you can describe it quicker um, and more in detail. And um, obviously, uh, collaboration is key here. We cannot do it alone. Uh, we have to work together with, with many partners. Uh, and for us, the UN work in the global working group helps uh, many aspects. One of them is uh, researching together on new things. Uh, getting access to data is key. Uh, as a lot of the previous speaker says, a lot of data is, is either in the hands of private sector or very sensitive. So the work on privacy preserving techniques we're doing together uh, with other colleagues on the UN global working group is very important for us. It has resulted in um, a manual, a handbook that is more or less international reference uh, now. So that's one of the important things. 
And the global platform, uh, for us in the Netherlands, we see uh, two uh, main very important goals. Um, one is the global data sets. And, and um, there are data there already, like the AIS shipping data. Uh, at CBS, we did research uh, on the cruise ships uh, visiting Bonaire, uh, the island in the Caribbean. Um, and we can use this global available data set to monitor further changes in international shipping. There's also satellite information, flight information, and um, we feel that the full potential has not been reached there. Uh, so if we can can do what, what Mr. Uh, Mohammed from uh, said, uh, talk to these private companies and see whether we can find business models that we get more data there, uh, that they feel safe, we use it for scientific statistical purposes, not hampering their commercial interest. I think there's, there's more potential there. In the European Union, uh, there's a, a deal now with um, Expedia, uh, Booking.com, uh, Airbnb to get data about these platforms for statistical use in Europe. And I think uh, deals like this can also be made on a global level. Um, in the past, we talked to some of the big companies, uh, Google, Microsoft, and we see that there are openings to, to get more data there. So, so more global data sets that we can all share, use together, um, would be an important thing to um, improve even the value of the global platform. And the second point is, is algorithms as a service. Uh, we, we want to, we're all in a new world. We're all developing uh, new methods to, um, to deal with big data. Um, and we want to share our ideas. And obviously we can share methodology papers, uh, but it's even better if you can share the algorithms. So the global platform makes it possible to share algorithms as a service. An example is the new um, OECD uh, text algorithm for sustainable development goals that can analyze uh, which SDGs a certain text is relevant for. It's a way to share methods, uh, but it's also a way to let it used by everyone. Uh, so it might be a very efficient way to work together. So for us, these, these two things are key uh, global platform uh, contributing things to, to our own task as CBS. It's important that the global platform is linked to the regional national hubs and to big data centers in every country. Um, in that way, you can work together on data and algorithms. There are different forms for that uh, technically, uh, but also uh, in programs. Uh, we like to keep working together uh, with the people from the platform and, and the global uh, working group. Um, uh, for training, uh, for us, we, we, we not too much involved until now, but obviously it can be used for, um, for sharing and using materials. At the Netherlands, we have our own um, Statistics Netherlands um, um, Academy, the, the training center. We give courses on big data. Obviously, we can share materials on a global platform, but you can also look at the platform, what's there, and, and use it for our own purposes. So in, in, in general, um, it's an exciting new world, big data. We have to be in there. Uh, there's so much data around there. Uh, we have to be using it to keep relevant and we can really improve our services and our roles. And uh, Global Health for Helps, uh, and for me, the main priorities would be the, the sharing of global data sets, um, also negotiating with these private partners, show them that we can really do it in a good way that also benefits them. Uh, as a social good and algorithms as a service. Um, I guess I used up my time. So thanks, Claire. Thank you so much. No, I think really useful and great to get that picture of how uh, Statistics Netherlands is using the global platform in a very, uh, in a very practical way. So that was um, incredibly useful. Thank you. Um, let me turn to uh, now to Dennis Mappa, who is a national statistician and civil registrar general of the Philippines. Welcome. And previously to this appointment uh, was in academia as the dean and professor in statistics of the School of Statistics at the University of the Philippines. So um, we have an academic perspective on this discussion as well, um, conducting research in areas such as poverty analysis, household savings and so on. Now, I know that um, Dennis is part of the statistical development plan um, for 2018 to 23. The, um, the uh, Philippines has set midterm goals for strengthening the system to include a number of different sources of data, administrative based data, big data, and also citizen generated data. And that the official, that the National Statistics Office is really, um, is really uh, embracing the, uh, the integration of many of the new data sources into your work on official statistics. So just um, given this, this modernization, 
tell us a little bit about how you're going about building statistical capacity in these new areas. Of course, they're putting new demands on your team of statisticians, um, and particularly the, the building on the theme of this session, how uh, international collaboration has helped you to develop the capacity that you need to uh, to meet those goals in the Philippines. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Claire. Good day to everyone. Uh, the Philippines, through the Philippine Statistics Authority, recognizes the use of big data and non-traditional data sources to complement the production of official statistics. Uh, the Philippine Statistics Authority aims to strengthen the data ecosystem to include the enhancement of administrative-based data, as uh, Claire mentioned, and exploration of use of big data and citizen-generated data as possible sources of our official statistics. Uh, the PSA commits to exploring these emerging fields in order to address the urgent needs for more timely and relevant statistics in our country, especially in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic. With respect to big data, the Philippines is still in the developmental stage with several government and private sector initiatives in the pipeline. Uh, since uh, 2016, the Philippine Statistics Authority has been conducting and attending various capacity building fora and conferences to slowly build the momentum of big data utilization in our country. At present, we are focusing mainly on projects with readily available data, such as our computation of the Rural Access Index for Sustainable Development Goal Indicator 9.1.1, or the proportion of rural population who live within two kilometers of all season road. Now, this is a joint project with the Asian Development Bank. Uh, together with other development partners like the National Statistical Office of Thailand and the World Data Lab, the Philippine Statistics Authority and the ADV have collaborated on a project which explored how the granularity of poverty estimates can be enhanced by integrating household surveys and censuses with data extracted from satellite imagery. Now, for price collection, the Philippine Statistics Authority started exploring the use of web scraping in collecting prices since uh, January this year, prices of more than 500 commodities in the market basket of our consumer price index for the national capital region uh, have been uh, regularly monitored from selected online stores through a system developed by our uh, in, uh, information technology and dissemination service. Movements of these prices are currently being observed and compared with offline prices just to make sure that we are uh, in sync and our data are uh, accurate. Now, our project uh, in the near future, which is actually next year, we are looking at remote sensing in the field of agricultural statistics. And uh, here, the Philippine Statistics Authority uh, have an existing uh, partnership with our Advanced Science and Technology Institute, which is a uh, section of our Department of Science and Technology. The collaboration uh, aims to identify and map aquaculture farms and estimate areas and production of major crops using uh, artificial intelligence and other remote sensing techniques. In addition to these efforts, the Philippine Statistics Authority intends to improve the utility of its Sustainable Development Goals dashboard and explore now casting in the area of labor and employment. This will be done as part of our partnership with the United Nations Development Program on the implementation of Data Governance Initiative, where big data plays a central role. Now, with respect to the citizens generated data, which is a, a very interesting uh, activity in our country, recognizing that available official statistics uh, data sources might not be sufficient to cope up with our data requirements for the 2030 agenda, the Philippine Statistics Authority explored the use of potential uh, non traditional data sources such as citizens generated data for official reporting on the SDGs. This was in collaboration with a partnership in statistics for development in the 21st century or Paris 21. Just recently, the Philippine Statistics Authority and Paris 21 released the country case study report on the use of citizen generated data for sustainable development goal reporting in our country. In our report, 81 sustainable development goal indicators can actually be supported by the potential citizen generated data and civil society organization data holdings. Relative to administrative-based statistics, the Philippine Statistics Authority, together with other K agencies, are currently developing the guidelines and mechanism for the registers and administrative reporting system with the goal of harmonizing administrative forms and registers. 
the PSA identified the following uh, areas where we can use administrative-based data. One is tourist arrivals, building permit, and trade as our pilot targets for the implementation of the projects. Consultations with concerned agencies uh, will be made for the review and recommendations on the improvement of the administrative forms. Now, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Philippine Statistics Authority had to cancel or defer scheduled uh, consultations, some workshops, and other collaborative activities with our partners. But the PSA continues to coordinate with our development uh, partners and stakeholders through our online platforms in support of its planned activities. During the recent concluded seventh session uh, of the uh, SCAP uh, Committee on Statistics, the Philippines supported the proposal to feature big data for official statistics in the future work of the committee and encourages the sharing of experiences, expertise, and best practices among the regions. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Back to you, Claire. Thank you so much. Obviously, a huge amount of um, really interesting work going on. And I particularly like those last reflections about sharing knowledge and experience, which, again, I think is a real theme of, of today. Um, let me uh, turn now uh, to Mr. Uh, Louis Kuakuaku, who is the manager of the Economic and Social Statistics Division at the African Development Bank. So we now have the perspective of a, uh, of a multilateral uh, bank. Um, Lewis, I know that the African Development Bank is planning to establish a data innovation lab, uh, which I'm sure is welcome news, um, and the objectives of this lab will include demystifying data science, and very, uh, something I think we can, all, uh, we can all agree is much needed, and of course, as the theme of this panel, building competencies within the bank and its regional offices, and building a repository of, of tested open source tools. So can you, I wonder, explain a little bit more about, um, again, um, you know, what the, uh, what the vision is here and how you see this uh, lab working together with some of the other things that we've been hearing about today, um, the, uh, the UN Global Platform and the regional hub in, in Rwanda. And then, of course, particularly the theme of this, um, of this uh, session and understanding that capacity is often a huge barrier to the uptake of many of these new tools. Um, talk a little, talk us a little bit through your uh, capacity, the capacity development strategy that underpins this um, the new lab. Over to you, Lewis. Okay, thank you, Claire, and uh, to the organizer for inviting the African Development Bank to, to this conference in this COVID uh, situation, very difficult situation, but we have to change our mind and we'll do the thing differently. So coming back to your question, the era in which we live today require a paradigm shift and a new business model for national statistical offices to continue providing timely and relevant data. We believe in transforming our continental national statistical offices into innovative statistical producers. That means good at exploiting traditional sources such as surveys and sources and good at innovating and using new sources of data and big data to complement the usual sources. We are launching the Data Innovation Lab to develop the skill and capacity to serve the internal need of the bank and support African countries in building their capacities to expand the range of statistics through exploring new data sources, sources and big data using the most updated technologies. The Data Innovation Lab development process will then follow two main axes. First, establishing and developing internal capacity, and second, sharing and disseminating uh, experiencing and expertise. During the establishment phase, we plan to achieve some uh, milestones. I'm not going to give a detail now. We have that. Let me also add that the bank, the bank as an active member of the advisory board of the UN Global Platform Working Group, an active member as well of the training skill and capacity development task team. We will then collaborate with the regional hub in Kigali and the UN Global Platform. Through the Data Innovation Lab, the, the bank, African Development Bank, will also collaborate with the regional hub to develop country to develop curricula that is relevant to the regional needs. That means the bank is available to play 
the coordinating role between countries and the regional help to facilitate countries' participation in the capacity building provided through a joint collaboration between the, the Data Innovation Lab and the Hub. We plan also to provide a resource person to conduct some specific training, and we want to follow up with country to ensure that they, play, they implement what they learn during training and provide any subsequent needed assistance to countries to, success, to successfully implement some sample projects. So that's what uh, I can say in this first question. Thank you so much indeed. And I think a really nice practical example of some of the steps that need to be taken and the opportunity for joining up initiatives um, across the region. So thank you. And I apologize, the sun has moved since we uh, started this session and now it's uh, full in my face. So in a minute, I will adjust my blind. Um, but let me now um, just quickly turn to uh, to some questions for you all. And I think um, I'm interested really to focus on the um, on the the theme of this session around training and capacity development. Uh, you've all, I think, presented in different ways some of the incredibly kind of innovative, forward thinking and inspiring uh, initiatives that you are leading in your respective institutions and some of the successes that you've had. I'd like you all now to just reflect on what is the the single, um, the single capacity, the single, um, uh, the single um, piece of capacity development or training or um, competency that, with that, if you had it within your institution, would help to make progress faster and and more sustainable. Um, so let me uh, turn to you first, Bert. What is the thing that you, your colleagues, uh, really need to be able to do? Um, to uh, to further this agenda. Thank you. But I think you're still on mute. Uh, yes. yes, I'm unmuted now, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, the single thing is, I think, is uh, more access to data. Um, I think uh, the UN is a strong brand, uh, and if we can talk uh, from that brand to um, holders of global data sets, that we might be able to have more deals to get data available. Uh, for example, uh, Airbnb, uh, Google. Um, and I think uh, trying to negotiate with these companies um, uh, how we can uh, make a business model, how we can use it for statistics, for scientific use that doesn't interfere with their commercial interest, I think is the main thing we can uh, do more to help us all. And we've done some things already, but I think the full potential have not been uh, met there. So thank you, Claire. Thank you. And perhaps for that, what you need within statistics offices is people who can help to think about business models and develop um, those kind of relationships, which I guess is quite a new uh, competency for statisticians. So perhaps that's something that we can be thinking about um, in the years to come. Thank you, but Dennis, let me turn to you. What is the thing that you, you wish your colleagues knew or could do that would help you to achieve your ambitions? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Claire. Um, I think uh, the Philippines, pardon, from the Philippine Statistics uh, Authority point of view, uh, we advocate a holistic approach of monetizing the National Statistics uh, Office, such that it does not cover only the technical capacity of its resources. Of course, the technical capacity is important, but also developing uh, soft skills, which are vital to enhance uh, productivity in statistical offices, uh, teamwork, uh, retention rate, employee satisfaction, leadership, and client satisfaction. Uh, technical expertise is, as I've said, very important, but the National Statistical Offices also need people who know how to collaborate, how to communicate, and how to understand the needs of the clients and uh, its stakeholders. So I think these are the uh, uh, requirements of uh, national statistical offices like the PSA in the uh, context of this uh, big data for official statistics. Uh, thank you very much, Claire. Thank you so much. I absolutely could not agree more that I think these soft skills are often undervalued, but hugely, hugely important. Um, as you say, leadership, negotiation, collaboration, and so on. Um, Lewis, let me turn to you as you look across the region and the aspiration to uh, 
to develop the innovation lab and increase the use of, of big data across the continent. What do you think is the key skill that is needed um, to, um, to really enable uh, the, the kind of expansion of this sort of work um, across the continent? What is it that your colleague, you think your colleagues really need to know to be able to do their jobs in this new world? Uh, thank you, Claire. First of all, we, we, we first need the resources to, to, to implement that. And the first thing we are doing is uh, the main vehicle for the bank to provide such care support is to have some resources. And what we have, we are developing is the static capacity building program. Uh, since uh, almost three years, we couldn't mobilize resources. And, uh, but now I'm happy to tell you that uh, currently we are, going, we are going to, we are on the approval process and we are going to, to our board, we are going to meet our board in October, November for, for and seek the approval for the, for the phase five of the capacity building. And uh, it will help us really to work with uh, African countries and we will have enough resources to develop uh, uh, the innovation lab and uh, the African information highway activities and big data issue. And uh, we, we, we are ready We develop a work program on how we are going to work with all African countries in this uh, new, in this uh, new uh, uh, and uh, innovative sources. And uh, we are really ready and we, we, we got the informal approval from, the, and uh, now we are going to formally to the board and uh, seek the resources. And, uh, and I can give more detail if you want. Thank you, that uh, was great. But, I, yeah. <laughs> but we need to have resources to do that. That's what uh, our main target now, and we will, we will mobilize resources to do that. Absolutely. Message received and understood and I hope heard loud and clear uh, to our audience around the world. And I think um, I think so. Thank you very, very much. I mean, I think, again, this session following on very neatly from the previous session has really expanded and inspired our sense of the possibilities that are available here and the ways in which countries already very practically using the insights from from combining different data sources. Uh, big, small, um, administrative, citizen-generated, and so on, to provide new insights and give information, give politicians the information that they very urgently need to make good decisions. But I think what else, you know, what has revealed to me very clearly from the three of you is that, again, rather like the previous session, these are not, these are, of course, technical questions, but there is a huge range of other things, not just the pure technical competence that one has to start there, which are needed to achieve our goals here. And of course, the business skills that were mentioned, the soft skills around leadership and collaboration, and of course, the resources that can underpin those that make everything else possible. So I want to, again, thank all of the three of you for a really interesting and stimulating conversation. Once again, unfortunately, we're not able to give you that global round of applause that your efforts deserve, but um, I certainly thank you, and I'm sure that our silent global audience does too. Um, so thank you very much indeed. And now, of course, we've come to uh, an important moment to the closing, uh, concluding remarks and the closing session of this um, UN conference on big data for official statistics. Um, so to provide us with a perspective of the whole um, conference um, and look forward to, uh, to next time. Let me first invite uh, Ms. Gemma van Halderen, who is known to, I'm sure all of you as the Director of Statistics at UNSCAP and one of our co-hosts, Gemma. Wonderful, thank you very much, Claire, and thank you very much for a very interesting and, and continuing to be very inspiring closing session this afternoon. Uh, it is my great pleasure to, to be um, part of this session and um, prepare a few, provide a few closing remarks. Dear Commissioner Shinwat Khan, Statistician General, uh, Mr. Asinga, Claire, all my panel panelists in this closing session, ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere pleasure to thank you for being 
at this sixth international conference on big data for official statistics. My office, the Statistics Division of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, is very happy to be partnering with Statistics Korea, the Statistics Division of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and the UN Global Working Group on Big Data for Official Statistics in the organization and the delivery of this event, and to be sharing the forefront of recognizing the potential of big data or as Tom just said, recognizing the potential of any data for official statistics. While the COVID-19 pandemic did not make it possible for all of us to gather in Seoul at this time, our colleagues from Statistics Korea have shown to be excellent hosts in the world of virtual communication by actively helping in the development of the conference program and providing the technical solutions. I'd like to thank the Statistics Korea and the entire Statistics Korea team for all of your support to make this conference successful. I'd also like to thank our panelists, our moderators, our support staff monitoring the chat box, our program committee for not only developing the program, but also delivering on it. And I'd finally like to thank you, our audience for being with us, for your insightful and at times very challenging questions and for joining us wherever you may be at whatever time of the day or night. It has been a pleasure to have you join us in Asia and the Pacific through Seoul, Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last three days, we have traversed the globe virtually from our friends in Scandinavia and North America to Latin America and the Caribbean, Africa, Europe, our Arab nations and to Asia and the Pacific. We've heard from New Zealand in the south, Denmark in the north, everyone in between. And we've heard from countries large and small, developed and developing. We've also traversed topics dear to all of us. Official statistics compiled using big data sources. National statistical officers experimenting with big data for official statistics, as well as new data sources and new standards in response to COVID-19 development partners and countries shared the potential of big data for compiling the SDG indicators. The immense potential and the power of the global statistical community uniting to develop the global platform of data, methods, experiences and opportunity. A global platform that we've all heard is ready for you globally and through the regional hubs. The COVID-19 pandemic is with us, but for how long we do not know. But we do know that COVID-19 is an opportunity. The statistical community is rich, rich with ideas, rich with solutions. It is bold, it is courageous, and is ready to innovate and rise to whatever challenges we are presented with. And this conference has given us all the opportunity to connect, to hear from each other, to learn, to be inspired. And I have been inspired by all of the speakers and by all of the questions posed by our audience. As we heard from Mr. Stefan Schweinfest at the opening of this session, under the umbrella of the UN Global Working Group on Big Data for Official Statistics, many experts from all stakeholder communities are already working together. Many collaborative data projects are currently being executed on the UN Global Platform, and you're all invited to join this work. We need in-kind contributions of experts in statistics, computer science, machine learning, data engineering. We also need support from the donor community so that we are able to undertake more projects, especially for the benefit of statistical institutes from developing countries. Please, if you have been inspired as I have during these last three days, I all urge you to get involved. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to thank, again thank Commissioner Shin Khan for your leadership and for hosting this conference. Your team really have done an excellent job and deserve much praise and a good rest. Statistics General, Mr. Rasinga, thank you, the entire Global Working Group on Big Data for Official Statistics, for your leadership, for your inspiration and for all of your hard work and collaboration. It is important and it is valued to the Secretariat, the Program Committee, UNDESA, and my own team at UNESCO. A wonderful job, a wonderful conference. And I'd just like to also thank Mr. Tom Smith 
for encouraging us to get beyond the word big in big data. It's just data. Let's use it. So all the wishes from day one for a very enjoyable and very fruitful discussion at the sixth international conference on big data for official statistics have come true. Thank you very much. Back to you, Claire. Thank you, Gemma. A wonderful, uh, wonderful set of, uh, com of sort of, of uh, remarks and thoughts as we close. And I certainly echo your thoughts about the excitement of the conference and grateful thanks to those who've helped to bring it into being. Um, so let me now, as the second part of this closing panel, introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Rasenga Maluleke, who's the Statistician General of Statistics South Africa, as we all know, and also, of course, importantly, in this context, the co-chair of the UN Global Working Group on Big Data, one of the groups that have worked so hard to bring us here. Rasenga, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, and indeed, uh, uh, let us uh, note all protocols as uh, uh, have been noted by uh, our colleague who spoke before me. There are just a few things that we need to take forward. And one of the things is the issue that she makes of being inspired. We cannot uh, say we didn't hear the toxin being sounded. So we need to uh, take that inspiration a lot more forward. And for those of us who are on the front line, be it uh, uh, the global working group, be it the platform, we need to take this work forward. And, and all the colleagues that we've been working with in preparations, it is very critical that those of us who have been in preparations, including the secretariat, get seized with all the issues that have been raised. Over the last two days, we have listened to different speakers. Uh, I particularly got interested in one of the presentations in the use of data in mapping issues in relation to crime and, 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 and the deployment of artificial intelligence as we have had in just the previous session that just concluded. So there is a lot of space through which we can cut a niche and play and drive development in, in the area of big data uh, uh, for sustainable development in the, in, in the area of official statistics and the like. One of the things that we'll need to do going forward is to strengthen the hubs. There is enough evidence of everyone working out there, but uh, we will not be able to uh, touch everybody's lives within this global working group, within the platform, and making the pl platform uh, more deployable if we do not strengthen the hubs. The, the role of uh, uh, the private sector becomes very critical. Uh, uh, the private sector should become a partner. And I know when we come to the private sector, there are issues of competitiveness the edge that they want to put across by keeping certain information to themselves so that they can use it for strategic edge in their business ventures. But there are certain areas and avenues where they could uh, work with us. And I think if we get uh, one or two uh, private sector partners, the others would feel much more encouraged to come and join us and we take this agenda forward. And in, in doing that, together with all the key players, the academia and other critical players out there in the world, we will forge a new direction in the access of, uh, for, uh, in the access of data, particularly the non-traditional data that we are used ourselves as national statistical offices. The competence of NSOs will not be to have uh, rear view mirrors where we always measure what has happened, connecting the dots uh, from what has happened or from behind. It will uh, require that we start connecting the dots, looking forward, not looking backwards. And in this regard, the agility with which we move as NSOs to encompass and work with everyone as equal partners becomes very, very critical. 
So indeed, uh, uh, colleagues, indeed, uh, members of the global community, indeed, uh, distinguished uh, delegates, this has been a great three days well spent in Seoul remotely. Uh, now let us come and appreciate the work of the Statistics Office of the Republic of Korea and the Korean government uh, uh, in general, the Republic of Korea uh, government. Uh, without their support and their work, uh, hard work indeed, to make this possible that they could connect all of us from all over the world, it wouldn't have worked. Again, the work of the Secretariat, uh, the colleagues, uh, 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 led by our uh, director within the United Nations Statistics Commission, their division, as well as higher up in the entire UN echelons of leadership. Uh, we have seen uh, on daily basis working with uh, colleagues like Ronald and others. And indeed, I could see at times that they were putting much more weight in this regard than many of us were putting in preparing for the meetings uh, uh, that we, we had to put in place for this purpose. Let us hold on steadily for together as we hold hands, even during trying times like these ones of COVID-19, we will change the world. And indeed when we have changed the world, we'll shape it in such a way that it will never be the same again. But those who will receive it from us will receive data with enough data for better decisions. I thank you. Thank you so much, Rasenga. Truly a sort of inspirational idea to hold on to in these sort of sometimes hard and challenging times. Um, Mr. Commissioner, Commissioner Shinruk Khan, you've, uh, you've already been mentioned several times with praise and gratitude for you and your team's hard work uh, in bringing us all together here, uh, virtually, if not, in, if not able to, to enjoy Seoul in, um, in reality. But let me now finally invite you to offer us your closing thoughts um, as we near the very end of, of all of your labors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. It's nice to see you again. I'm Shinu Kang, Commissioner of Statistics Korea. Ms. Gemma Haldren, uh, Director of the Statistics Division of UN Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Mr. Rizenga Malreke, Chairperson of the Global Working Group, and all participants from countries and international organizations. It's time to wrap up the Fixed Speak Data Conference. First of all, I'd like to thank the chairs and the speakers of the conference who led participants in different time zones from all over the world to in-depth discussion despite the virtual conference due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I also extend my special thanks to the staffs of UNSD, UNSCOP, and GWG for their effort to operate the conference successfully and over a thousand attendees. In spite of the, uh, the inconvenience caused by time difference, I think this conference has led to a meaningful discussion on various data sources and experience of creative use in each country. Furthermore, one thing that all participants have to come to agree with is that increased accessibility to data through knowledge sharing can help reduce the polarization of economic recovery among countries under the COVID-19 crisis. Data on economics, uh, trade, and migration are interconnected across the world. Therefore, the use of innovative technologies for data collection and analysis will not only affect one country, but also have a ripple effect in the region and even the entire uh, global community. In this regard, I think this conference has provided a valuable opportunity to reassure that the COVID-19 response of international statistical community also should be based on cooperation among countries. In particular, one of the achievements of the conference the Seoul Declaration will be a new milestone for international cooperation in the data sector over the next few years. I expect to promote the utilization of the 
UN Global Platform through sharing awareness and cooperation among countries. And I hope our international statistical community will contribute to overcoming the COVID-19 outbreak and achieving SDGs. I appreciate you all, you all once again for attending the conference and in a year, I look forward to meeting you on face-to-face -face at the seventh Big Data Conference. Finally, I'd like to finish my closing remark by quoting Peter Drucker, who reminds us of the pristine mission of statisticians during this difficult time. If you cannot measure, you cannot manage. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Statistician General. Thank you all. Um, we're now at the, the very last seconds of this conference. So just very much want to echo all of the remarks that have been made. Grateful thanks to all of your teams and um, to all of the many hundreds of people who have watched these sessions um, over the last few days and cannot echo strongly enough uh, the commissioner's final fervent wish that we should be able to meet together in person uh, next year in the Sultanate of Oman in uh, August 2021 and reconvene these incredibly important, uh, incredibly important discussions. So in the meantime, I wish you all well individually and of course together uh, in all of your endeavors. Um, and with that, uh, this uh, big the conference on the UN conference on uh, big data and official statistics is closed. Thank you all very, very much indeed. Let's join in now a round of applause for everybody involved.